Oh man, it's been about three weeks since I made a video, so I'm excited to get back at it. Guys, we're talking Julio Jones trade. Crowder is a no-show at camp. Becton is hurt, and we're looking at Morgan Moses. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! What's up, gang? Welcome to Jets Talk. My name's Ryan. I'll be your pilot today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, I have been away for about three weeks. Not because I don't love your faces, I do. But myself got himself some new bling. The dude got married. I was down in Aruba for the last week and I was planning things for the wedding and everything. So I decided to give myself a little hiatus. So I'm back. We're going to be talking a little bit of Jets news. It was a lot of fun. Thank you to all you guys that have reached out and wished congratulations and whatnot. So that was, that was a lot of fun to see. Um, but let's get into some news. We got some Jets news to talk about. And ooh, you know what? I am going to be doing a contest. I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm getting four tickets to go to the Jets home opener against the Patriots week two. And two of you lucky viewers are going to get a chance to come and uh, watch the game. Uh, not sure where the tickets are going to be. Probably upper deck. So, you know, grain of salt there. But someone's going to win tickets. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel. Uh, you know, tell your friends to subscribe too because then maybe they get a chance, or maybe don't, because then you have a better chance. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure how to do all this stuff, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a fun giveaway, uh, and we're going to do that as it gets closer to the season, so it's going to be, I'll probably have some more ways to, to get entered for, like, multipliers and stuff like that, but I don't know. I'm excited nonetheless. Let's jump into some Jet news here, and just news from around the NFL and how it could affect our New York Jets. So first on the docket, Julio Jones is traded to the Tennessee Titans for a 2022 second round pick and a 2023 fourth round pick. The Texan or uh, Atlanta Falcons also get a 2023 sixth round pick back uh, as well. So we've seen some pretty big names get moved in the last two years, specifically DeAndre Hopkins. Now you get Julio Jones. And some people were saying, hey, why were the Jets in on this? Because, you know, cheap contract and stuff. But I think most of us understand that Julio at 32 years old, wants to go to a contender. And the Jets, while we have the cap space to take on his contract, just would not have made a whole lot of sense based on where our team is currently at. And our roster at wide receiver is actually really, really nice. Like, I think we are one of the best wide receiver units, I guess, in the entire league. Like, when you look from player one to player, like, five, they're all all pretty rock-solid guys. I don't think there's too many teams that have that solid depth across the entire board. So... Uh, the Titans take on a three-year contract, going to be worth $15.3 million, 11 .5 and 11.5 over the course of the next three years. Uh, now, the Titans only have about $4 million in cap space, so they're going to have to rework that contract in order to make this whole thing work out. Now, from the Titans' perspective, I think this is a really good trade. I like this move for them. They are in a win-now mode with Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, uh, that whole unit. And then you're talking about, like, Julio Jones, he wants to go to a contender. So this just sort of makes a whole lot of sense here. Plus you have the, you know, Arthur, uh, why am I losing his name? Falcons new head coach, Arthur Smith. Is that right? That sounds wrong. That's right. <laughs> Whatever. The, you got him over in Atlanta. So the connection with, uh, you know, the, his former team in uh, Tennessee, a little bit of a connection there. Uh, and I like this for Julio. I think he winds up being arguably the third option on that team, which is insane. I mean, you think about that unit. If you have play action going to Derrick Henry and then bombing it over the top to Julio Jones, it's incredible. And this window of opportunity for the Titans is probably a two or three year window, depending on how long Derrick Henry stays at his current level. Now, when you think about a second and a fourth round pick that they're giving up, a second round pick, it's going to be a late second. They don't have, you know, that, that second round pick in 2022 isn't going to help them this year and arguably may not help them next year as a late second round pick as a rookie. You know, how much is he really going to contribute uh, year one? So I like this move for the Titans. I don't think they give up anything of like too much value that's going to hurt them in any capacity. From the Falcon side of things, I know they probably wish they could have gotten a first. I think if anyone had offered up a first, they would have jumped at it. But looking at Julio's age, that contract is an absolute beast. And then you have just his, his relative health concerns. He, he winds up being one of the greatest tandems between him and Matt Ryan in the history of the league. I think the only one that had more yardage was Marvin Harrison and Peyton Manning, uh, which is insane because I'm pretty sure Peyton Manning and like Reggie Wayne are also up there <laughs> on like the all-time list as well. Um, 
But you look at this from the Falcons' perspective, and it's bittersweet because you have an elite Hall of Fame wide receiver that you are losing for essentially a second and a fourth round pick. And if you want to play the whole game of like future draft picks are worth a little bit less, then it's like a third and a fifth, and it's a real kick in the balls. But either way, I think this was the right move. It sucks as a Falcon fan because you you have to watch Matt Ryan play. Uh, definitely this year, probably next year. I know a lot of people thought they should have taken a quarterback early on, but Matt Ryan's contract's pretty much a beast, and you kind of have to roll with him for right now. It's going to be exciting. You're going to see Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, by the end of this year, I think is going to be the top receiving target, uh, even, you know, above some of their other guys over there. Um, Losing my mind right now. Who is the other receiver they have? Friggin', um... Trying to do this in one take, and I'm not going to look it up. I don't... Hey, he's... Ridley, there it is. <laughs> Ridley, he's on my damn fantasy team. Um, so even even with Ridley there, I think he's going to end up being Matt Ryan's favorite target. So overall, like the move for the Titans. Sucks a little bit for the Falcons, but you had to move on from him. Julio wasn't going to play for you anyway. Uh, you have to start rebuilding at some point, and, you know, it's just going to be a, a rough year or two, I think, until they get everything right there. Uh, and then as the Jets, yeah, never going to be an option for the Jets. I like where we're at already. Uh, Jamison Crowder has been a no-show at Jets camp. He is due $10.5 million this year with a cap hit of about $11.4 million. Uh, He's 28 years old. He's in the final year of his deal. This is why he's holding out. It's a contract year for him. Uh, And at 28 years old, you have to think he's got to be looking at his next contract. He's going to be 29 next year. How much of a contract is he going to get after uh, a single year? Not to mention it's a rookie quarterback coming in. He just had to put up with the, the incompetence of Adam Gase, the, the you know, not-so-great offense uh, that he had along with Sam Darnold. I think when you're a Crowder, it's right to hold out. Now, hopefully the Jets, I don't know, maybe they give him some type of extra year or two and then lower his cap hit for this year. But more than likely, Crowder is either going to get traded or they're going to have a stalemate and he's going to come back to camp and the Jets are just going to play out this season. Uh, Crowder probably doesn't have a future with the Jets if this contract does not get done because we drafted Elijah Moore at 34 overall. And this kid looks awesome. I cannot wait to watch him. He had, like, phenomenal stats this past year, only, like, eclipsed by uh, Smith down in down in Alabama, the guy that was taken, what was it, was he, like, 10th or something like that, I think, uh, wherever Philadelphia picked. But that was, that, that's basically the whole crux of the, the Jamison Crowder thing. Now, he graded out as the 37th best wide receiver of all wide receivers. He had 700 all-purpose yards, six touchdowns, including one passing touchdown, uh, or in addition, one passing touchdown. So seven total touchdowns from Jamison Crowder last year. Um, Yeah, look, I don't know. I would love to see Crowder here. I think it's valuable for our rookie quarterback to have someone who's been as rock solid as Crowder. Uh, But I totally get him holding out for more money or for a longer contract, even if, you know, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't help us right now, but... I get the whole uh, issues that are going on. So Crowder, hopefully you come back. We want to have you here. You're going to be a great safety blanket and mentor for Elijah Moore and Zach Wilson. Uh, And I'm just excited. This kid's been like rock solid since he got to New York. So I don't know. Hopefully we get him back on the field soon. Then we're talking Makai Becton, the big ticket. He's not playing right now. He's, uh, He's got some plantar fasciitis, which I'm told... Uh, is not a huge deal. It doesn't appear like he needs to have surgery for this. I, From my understanding, it's not a weight-related thing. I have heard things that he's out of shape and, and whatnot, which means you gotta see more pancakes on the field and less pancakes off the field, Makai. So come on, get your body right, get your foot right, and let's get on the field. I want to see this guy just tossing people around this season, and I'm really excited to see what his next step forward in this process is going to be. It's good that the Jets drafted Elijah Vera Tucker at you know, this year in the first round, because he has experience playing left tackle at USC. Now, he was projected to be a guard at the next level and play left guard next to Makai Becton, but in the event Becton cannot start or cannot play a few games this year, we at least have that sort of flexibility to move him over. And you know what? That's probably why the Jets were looking at uh, Morgan Moses as well, uh, which I guess brings us into the uh, the next side of things. Uh, Morgan Moses, the Jets brought him in for an interview. The Jets have not signed him as of yet. I believe he met with the Bears as well. Um, he is six foot six, 335 pounds, 30 years old. He was the right tackle for the Washington football team last year, graded out as a 79.9 on pro football focus and graded out as the 18th best tackle overall. That's left tackles and right tackles 
For reference, Makai Becton was the 31st overall tackle when factoring in uh, both sides there. Now, where he shined was as a run blocker. He graded out as the seventh best run blocker in the NFL. Uh, as it stands, the Jets have $26 million in cap space. We still have a few more rookies to sign. I have to go through it. I don't actually know which rookies haven't signed yet. I've been a little off the grid. Uh, Aruba doesn't have the best service down there. <laughs> but uh, look, I think if you could bring in Morgan Moses, I know he plays right tackle, but I think in the event that you have an issue with Becton, we saw him get banged up a little bit last year. Uh, wasn't able to start 100% of the games or 100% of each game. Like, you get winded, things of that nature. You can move Fant over to the left side. You can have Vera Tucker possibly play left side. You could have Vera Tucker play left guard while Fant's on the right side. And then you have Moses plug in as the right tackle. So I don't... I think as a Jets team overall, we need tackle depth. I don't think it's something that we're going to be able to go into the season without a solid backup left tackle. And with a rookie quarterback... And the dependence we're going to have on this kid getting it right, like right off the bat, I think you have to get that position depth wise really, really fine tuned. So those are my thoughts on on those topics. We got some other stuff that I'm sure is going to come up in the next few days and weeks. I'm excited to get all this stuff going. And oh man, I just can't wait for the season. Everything I see out of camp is just oh so exciting. Let me know uh, what you think. What you've been up to the last three weeks? I miss your faces. And as always, go Jets. Yeah!